Hello and welcome to Science Never Stops. I'm your host, Joseph Vick, with the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. And today we are testing out the Law of Conservation of Energy, or the first law of thermodynamics, using different types of balls with different types of material and testing their drop height. And so, let's get started. First thing you'll need is you'll need some sort of writing instrument. You'll need your journal to write down your observations and your data collected. You'll need a ruler, which I conveniently taped to my sort of scientific testing sheet there. Or you could use a tape measure, mark something up along the wall, use paper, strips, a meter stick, uh, any type of measuring device you may have that can measure with height. And I have collected five different types of round ball things to test. So first is round blue rubber racket ball, a plastic round cat toy, a round wooden ball, a round glass marble, and a round ball of beeswax. And with these I'm going to test their drop height and see if there's any transfer of energy. Now to get started, I have set up here the law of conservation of energy or the first law of thermodynamics uh, states that energy is neither created nor destroyed. Uh, it is energy can only be transferred or changed from one thing to another, one object to another. And usually a lot of energy is lost in the form of heat being lost. And overall, just note that energy cannot be created or destroyed, it's only transferred. In your data sheet or in your journal, I recommend you whatever type ball materials you find, you write those down with the type of ball. I had my rubber example, rubber ball. Plastic ball is the form of the cat toy. The wooden ball. The glass marble. And the wax ball. Determine whatever your height is. My height for this experiment I've set to 18 inches, which is roughly about uh, half a meter. Uh, with this scenario. Uh, that would be about half of a yardstick if you were using a yardstick. So I have 18 inches is my height sub I, which is my initial height. And the bounce height, we're going to take the difference. So I have 18 minus whatever our bounce height, whatever the ball, once we drop, bounces and comes back. We mark that measurement on our measuring tape or ruler. We write that here and then we determine our difference. So let's get started. So let's test out using our first sample piece, the rubber blue ball here. So I have it set at the very top of 18 inches and I'm going to drop. And from its highest point, it looked as though it went to about 10. I do recommend that if you're doing this, do it with a lab partner. That way you can have someone watching here as you see the ball bouncing back up and can note what that uh, height measurement was once it dropped. In science, uh, multiple attempts are best. So if you wanted to do multiple drops and take the average of your drops, that would be absolutely wonderful. So that is up to you. So for this video, I'm just going to do the, the one. I'll do it again so we can test. So there we go, going up. And from mine, I'm going to say it went up to about 9. So I'm going to put 9 inches here on my bounce height on my data sheet. Next, I'm going to move to the plastic piece, the form of the cat toy. Holding it out and up and going to test, release. And at most, it looked like it went up to seven inches. So it went up less than the blue bouncy ball. Next, let's test the wooden ball sample. So going up to the 18 inch mark. And at most, I saw it land at the four, 
wooden sample, four inch height. Next on our list is the glass marble. Oh, that looked to be about two inches at its max height from my angle, maybe a little bit less. And our last is the wax, honeybee wax ball. Oh, that looked about one and a half. I'll just say one. Now notice, as we had each one of our sample pieces, whatever material we had, it ended up being a little bit different in response because of the transfer of energy. We had with the bouncy ball, there was a transfer of energy once it hit the table, and that energy went back into the ball and it went up, but it was about half the height that you had with the bounce. And each one became less and less because of the material and that transfer of energy as it hit the table and that energy was transferred into the table and not transferred back into the material that we were using for the drop. Now, what kind of materials can you find around your house to test out? Uh, I encourage you to find all different types, all different sizes. You can do this much bigger using sports equipment. You could use uh, baseballs, basketballs, soccer balls. So does the size of your ball that you're using play a factor? So I encourage you to do your scientific study with discovering what kind of bounce you can have and in the comments below, I encourage you to write out which one of your samples gave the most energy transfer. So from our sample here, we have which ball sample transferred the most energy. So we're going to do it to where transferring the most energy as it went down and hit, transferring it to the table. So doing the math, we have the less difference here, so we had 17 with the wax, so it transferred uh, the most energy into the table when it landed. So the most energy transfer would be the wax ball. And the least energy would be the one that bounced the highest. So we have 18 here, so we have half that height given to us by the bouncy ball. So again, I encourage you to do the science, continue doing multiple drops, and post your comments of your pictures of your ball bounces and tell what heights became the highest and what transfers were transferred the most or the least. And remember, energy is neither created nor destroyed, and science never stops.